Hi there everybody, hi, welcome back. I say that in that very creepy manner because I'm I'm currently sitting on a rocking chair and I just feel very official and very, I don't know, like I'm hosting a story time or something, something's going on. Probably something more exciting than what I'm about to share with you guys. Um, and that is my March favourites. I haven't done a favourites for a few months. I haven't really caught you up on what I've been loving beauty wise, what I've been reading, um, my fashion favourites, so we're going to talk about all those things today. Yay. So uh, this is a bit ridiculous, but currently in my hand, I am holding three pairs of sunglasses, yes. Three pairs of tortoiseshell sunglasses. And it is tortoiseshell sunglasses in general that are my favorites. I've kind of accumulated more pairs than I'm, I'm proud of. I'm a little bit of a sunglasses hoarder, that does happen. I'm a little bit of an everything hoarder, really, let's be honest. It's not just sunglasses, don't even try and kid yourself. So these are my three favorites, I wanna talk about these. Normally I'd wear I'd probably just black, straight black sunglasses or even just like metal ones. My Ray-Bans are a firm favorite still, but never tortoiseshell. Um, so this actually started off with the these are from Key and they are the Rumours sunglasses. They do actually also come in black, but I saw this uh, tortoiseshell and green. I'm not sure you'll be able to see this on camera, but the actual lenses are like this slightly green tint, which I really enjoy. And actually I think all of these, yeah, all of these glasses have green tints to them, which just seems to be a thing. These ones are really cool. They're kind of like a cat eye, but not super exaggerated. They're a little bit more wearable, which I like. I will model them for you, of course. I like them a lot. These are really cool. Um, So yeah, they're from Key. Uh, Key are a nice like middle brand when it comes to sunglasses. They're a bit more expensive than your average high street ones, but they do have really nice quality to them. Also the styles, which you just can't really find anywhere else. They do a lot of really cool styles. So they are the Key Rumours sunglasses. Now, let me tell you about these sunglasses. It's been quite a journey. I've been on a journey with these. Uh, these are the Celine Tildes in the tortoiseshell, which I believe is called the Havana style. I will leave all the numbers and details and codes and things down below along with the links for these. I have these sunglasses in black. They're probably my most worn sunglasses ever. They're amazing. They cover your entire face. You can't really see yourself when you're wearing them, which is everything that I love in sunglasses. Don't look at me today. That is what they say when I wear these. So I really wanted to track down the tortoiseshell ones, the tildes in general. They just seem to be so hard to come across. I don't know why. Um, they pop up on random websites occasionally, but they sell out really quickly. But they are just my favorite style of sunglasses. They're very square. They have nice thicker frames and I just really enjoy them. So um, yeah, it took me a long time to find these ones, but I'm so glad I did. Um, so as you can see, they're pretty large. I think they break up a black outfit quite nicely just to have that difference. That's why I like the tortoiseshell so much, I think. And then my high street option because, you know, love a pair of high street sunglasses as well. I found these at Topshop. They're kind of different for me. I didn't think I would like these. They're sort of very round, almost like oval egg shape. These are my egg sunglasses. Um, same tortoiseshell style, same green lenses. These are probably the greenest. I think you can see them a bit better, how green they are. And yeah, I just, they're not probably the most flattering sunglasses, but I really like the style of them. Um, I think they're pretty cool. So a favorite, favorite of mine. And I've kind of just been alternating between these three and probably my Ray Bans as well, because I always wear those things. So I want to talk about a pair of shoes as well. You might have seen these cropping up a little bit on my Instagram. In fact, I wore them and got told off because apparently it's not sandal weather yet. Guys, let me live my dream, let me wear my shoes. I have wanted a pair of these, they're the Saleron Nude Pieds. These sandals I so very desperately wanted last year and they were just sold out. You could not find them anywhere, which was very frustrating. It always seems to be whenever I finally want something and I've been talking myself into the investment for a really long time and thinking about it, it's then impossible to find which is annoying. So this year, um, I was just casually browsing through the Netta Porter Newman section, as you do, and they had these. So I, I thought it may be, I think I bought these back in February. I thought it may be February, but these are gonna be my summer shoe. I'm gonna invest and I'm gonna do it now before they sell out. So um, yeah, I picked up a pair of them. I got a size up. I've come to find that when you go for shoes that don't have a back, so whether that's slides, other kind of sandals, things like that, it tends to be better to size up. So I sized up thinking I could always swap them if they went right, but they were perfect. Tan for me is just something that I kind of wanted to add a little bit more into my wardrobe, this tan color. Going back to my last video, if you caught my spring high street haul, I'm feeling like the earth tones. I'm feeling the browns and the beiges and the blacks. So really happy about those. Obviously, Saint Laurent shoes, although they are just a sandal, not the cheapest thing you could be putting on your feet. And then, uh, a few of you guys alerted me to the fact that Zara had been about doing its thing, as it usually does, and had produced these. I'm actually going to hold both of them up together so you can see the difference. 
Look at that. Can you tell which one's which? Because I struggle. Obviously Zara are known for their kind of like um, imitating designer pieces, <laughs> which is great for most of us because these were £25 and these were not. So um, I actually bought these just to kind of see how similar they were and to show you guys as well, of course, you know, always doing the research, the legwork, the buying things for you. That's my justification anyway. Um, so I got these and they are just so, so very identical. Obviously the quality is not gonna be here, although they're not bad. They feel pretty good. The leather is a slightly different color too. It's slightly more of a dark brown tan, whereas I, I do think I prefer this slightly more yellowy color. But I mean, apart from that, they are pretty much the same thing. So <laughs> if you like the YSL ones, but you can't quite stretch to the budget of a designer shoe, hop off to Zara, go and find these. They're on the website still at the moment. Um, I'll link them down below, but I thought I would just give those a quick mention because I know we love a dupe around here. I have a lot of beauty favorites to share with you. I feel like it's been a while since we've sat down and chatted about beauty. So there's a few new things and a few updates and things that I've been uh, using a lot and liking. So I'm gonna start with skincare. Now, eagle-eyed viewers will have noticed that um, this here, this little pink product, which is the Glossier Solution, uh, was actually in my last month's favorites thumbnail, but not the video. Don't really know what happened there. Um, I think I might have cut a whole part of that out without realizing. So I'm gonna talk about it again, even though I've been through this. Um, I wanted to give it a good try. Anything skincare in general, I like to really try out before I talk about it and really form an opinion properly. So this is now my second bottle and uh, the Glossier solution is basically an AHA, BHA, PHA, or the HA uh, type liquid exfoliant. Now they do market it towards acne prone skin um, and I wasn't sure if this was gonna be for me but I do enjoy to exfoliate in an acidic way so I like to use acidic toners to exfoliate my skin. First of all, I just adore the packaging, as with anything Glossier, they just seem to get it right. They do minimal and they do it well, but it has one of these little pumps that you basically put your cotton pad on, squish down, you get the perfect amount of product that way and it just is so much easier than having to tip something out, take a lid off, put the lid back on, lose the lid. My skin responded really well to this and I think when it comes to liquid exfoliators, they are so very much dependent on you. So different skins are gonna react differently. I personally know that I can't use anything that is purely glycolic, it doesn't work well with my face it just hurts. Um, lactic acid is definitely my favorite when it comes to these type of exfoliators and this actually has both of them in which I'm intrigued about. It kind of combines three different types of um, acid together in one. I didn't change anything else in my routine. Um, I just use this for almost a month solid. And my skin is just now generally a lot kind of smoother. That's definitely what I noticed. And I think that's probably just from consistent exfoliating. Smoother, brighter, um, my pores aren't completely gone because they just never will be, but they don't get as congested as quickly or at all really since I've been using this. I get a lot of pores around my nose and my cheeks in this area here. And they just look very clear and like there isn't anything really clogging them up so this definitely made a visible difference for me I'm still using it continue to use it daily in my routine I also think it helps my products go on better too so that is my big glossier solution chat out of the way uh, let's hope I don't edit that out of this video this time around so one other skincare product that I have also been using that's new um, is from herbivore and herbivore are finally 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 available in the UK they're being stocked in space okay I think exclusively and they sent me out a few bits and this was one of my favorites this is the orchid facial oil I love a facial oil I really do so this I started using as I normally would uh, before my moisturizer in the evening and then I just kept using it I just kept putting it on my face I use it in the morning I mix this into my foundation I use it at night I use it on my lips I sometimes just like pat this onto my face throughout the day I also use it around my eyes too my eyes have been quite dry recently very simple but kind of very hydrating oil it's very thin it's thinner than a lot of the facials that I've tried um, and it just seems to work into the skin so well and so easily and I absolutely love it for that now I do have dry skin so a facial oil is gonna always be something that I enjoy putting on and um, never makes me look too oily or too greasy but this is so thin I can literally douse my face in it in the morning go straight on with my foundation or whatever I'm putting on makeup wise and it doesn't interfere with it it just sinks into the skin leaves it incredibly hydrated um, and feels so so good and so comfortable also it smells really nice now let's talk about a few makeup bits I have these two 
Pot Rouges, I believe they are called. Yeah, Pot Rouge for cheeks and lips. These are from Bobbi Brown. I've been really into my cream products recently, so cream bronzers, cream blush, cream everything. I haven't even been using powder a lot. I just feel like my skin's reached a peak of dryness currently. I have the shades Powder Pink and Pale Pink here, which I think are absolutely gorgeous. Kind of very glossy, actually. They're very glossy products. They don't dry down to a powder like some cream blushes do. This one has probably been more of a favourite, more of a neutral colour, um, but actually the more cool tone pink is so pretty. It gives your cheeks this gorgeous flush. Because it doesn't dry down to a powder, they just look so natural. Um, I actually like to use these a lot when I'm not wearing any base makeup. Just having that little pop of colour on your cheeks. Um, and I also like to blend this on to the top of my nose, the tip of my nose, and then around my temples too, just to kind of give that really like fresh, I've just been outside for a run kind of look. Knowing full well that I don't do that. I don't exercise. No, no. Um, and then I have two products from Chanel. This is a revelation. I do not know what to make of this. I didn't know what to make of it when I bought it, but I knew I had to have it. It's an interesting one. So this is the Chanel, what is this called? Lip Balm and Powder Duo. Um, I have the shade 410 Rosso Pompiano. Okay. So this is a red lipstick. Um, but I kind of want to say it's like a deconstructed version of a red lipstick. I'm wearing this today, so if you've been wondering what I've been wearing on my lips, it's this. This is such an interesting product. So you get this little side here, which is a balm. So it's a clear um, lip balm, no colour, no tint to it. And then here is the actual colour, and this is powder. It is a solid pressed powder. You get these two little applicators and spoolies as well, but basically what you do is put the lip balm all over your lips and then press the powder on top. It's so natural, and that's a strange word to associate with a red lip, but because it's a powder, it's so much more blurred. The pigment is incredible, as you can see, it's just so red, but it just has that slight more kind of hazy look to it, which is the only way I can think to describe it. It's gorgeous, it's beautiful, and I packed quite a bit on, so it is very red, but you can do less, do more, depending on how strong you want your lip to look. You can put some of your fingers and really kind of work it in, um, and I just, I think it's such a cool concept for a lipstick. And then I have another product from Chanel here, this is Powder Illuminating Highlighting Powder in Warm Gold. <sighs> So I've used this quite a bit actually, this is also what I'm wearing today, and I felt like you can even see the warmth that this gives. Normally with highlighters I tend to stick to the kind of very champagne-y colours, neutral tones, um, but this is just the most gorgeous like warm bronze. It's not too dark a bronze, so I can still kind of use it having fairer skin, but I think, I think anybody could wear this and it would look incredible. It's a really gorgeous highlight as well, it's not chunky and glittery, it just gives you a sheen. And I've just been loving this. It's the only highlighter that I've been reaching for. So bronzing up, getting ready for summer. Please give me some glow. Okay, and then final makeup favourite, uh, which I probably should have mentioned first. We've gone completely backwards in terms of application. This is, uh, I think this is one I may have mentioned in a favourites before. This is from The Ordinary. It's the serum foundation. It's the lighter and sheerer and more glowy of the two foundations they do. And this has been the only base that I have been wearing um, over the last month. This is a very liquidy, you can almost hear it, thin foundation. You kind of have to when I used this before, and probably when I mentioned it in a favourites, I would just do my normal application with a beauty blender, a brush, whatever. But actually what I do now is just take maybe two pumps of this, really work it into my hands, and just rub it on my face as if I were um, using a moisturiser. Which sounds a very strange way to apply foundation, but doing it that way it just gives me this very sheer, very workable base. Um, and then I can go on with my concealer, I sometimes just use a beauty blender just to pat away any edges, and places that I've missed um, and it just gives my skin that little bit of glow a little bit of consistency so when I'm blending in other products they have something to kind of sit on top of I've been enjoying that one um, I really don't like the other ordinary foundation the coverage one don't like it at all whereas this one I love so um, they are very very different okay then I have two last beauty favorites both from Diptyque, how gorgeous are these? They're so pretty. This one in particular has like a frosted glass packaging. Oh, So this one I have had for a while. This is a super familiar one to most of you, I'm sure it's the Eau de, Well, Eau de Toilette perfume. Um, this to me is a very deep, musky, vanilla-y, woody, I could sit here and smell this forever. Um, it's quite a 
sweet scent as well something i would normally associate with like winter and autumn but for me this has been all i've wanted to wear and reach for recently to the point where now whenever i put a scarf or a coat on it still smells of this because i've just been dousing myself in it every single day i love it i think it's one of diptyque's best scents and um yeah if you do like your very sweet vanilla -y scents but you want something that's a little bit more elevated a bit more a bit more something to it than just um kind of like a pure vanilla this one is amazing i actually just did like a, an eye roll there didn't i let's put that down and then this one i think is a newer launch from diptyque it's the o rose um hair mist i love the smell of rose it's a very citrusy rose which is definitely the route i prefer to go down i don't like sweet rose it gives me a headache most of the time but this one is a bit sharper um it has a bit more to it than just a floral so this is designed to be sprayed on your hair which i think is so cool and it's just maybe that slightly more subtle version of a dry shampoo so obviously this isn't a dry shampoo you're not going to get any grease fixing you know like hair washing without having to get in the shower solution but it's gonna make your hair smell fresh and nice and i really enjoy it in fact i've also been wearing it sometimes when i don't reach for um the eau de Bell and i'm not feeling perfume because some days i just don't feel like having an overwhelming scent one of those products that is so unnecessary but i think it's a nice way to wear perfume it's a bit of a, a different one so normally in my favorites videos i will catch you guys up on what i've been reading throughout the month i've picked up quite a few books to read recently i've kind of got a few pages in and then not necessarily lost interest but haven't been ready to like get myself into a new story I wanted something a bit more familiar this month and something that I kind of already had a connection to and I knew what I was reading so I went back to these um, I really enjoy these. I get deeply, deeply into them. I do find if I neglect them, I have to reread probably an entire book to kind of catch myself up on it. So um, yeah, I read a whole of A Feast for Crows, which is the fifth book, I think, maybe the fourth book. Um, it's confusing because some of them are split up into two. So yeah, I read all of this one. I actually struggled to get into it. There's a lot of new characters um, and new places that you visit and I did find it hard, but the second half of the book, oh, it's a good one. Um, and then obviously the next one is A Dance of Dragons, which I've just started reading. I need to get through these because I really do want to start watching the show. I'm probably the only human on this earth who hasn't seen any of Game of Thrones, despite knowing so many spoilers now because it's just the most impossible thing to avoid it's always on social media this is the last one um because the next two have not been written yet whereas i think the series has basically just gone you know what we're gonna make it up we're gonna do our own thing uh also i actually have a cookbook here this is the 15 minute vegan by katie besco i've had this for a while and um hadn't even opened it and then started to look through for some inspiration when i was doing a food shop online and i've tried a few things now from here i've tried a few recipes and honestly they are so easy i'm a lazy girl when it comes to cooking I will so easily be tempted by just ordering food rather than cooking it because cooking takes a little bit more time than pressing buttons on delivery. But um, a few things that I have tried from this I've, I've liked a lot. So let me see if I can try and find them. So this one I made the other day, the cauliflower and dill mash. Um, I was looking for a good recipe for cauliflower mash and I saw this one. It's very simple. Um, it's different to the others I've tried though because it has non-dairy cream cheese in it, which I'd never thought of before and it just made it taste so good. So that I really liked. And there's also um, a courgette pasta thing that I made in here somewhere. And the pad thai. This recipe alone is worth getting this book for. So good. And I didn't think I liked pad thai. vegan snack of the month vegan find um so basically for easter i put this on my insta stories you guys might have seen it my dad bless his heart he made me up a little hamper of vegan treats because he knew i couldn't really have any of the easter eggs tastes like nutella in a bar um unbelievable probably incredibly unhealthy full of sugar full of crap but it's one of these things like oreos uh, which i think are just accidentally vegan amazing tastes so good um i obviously restrained myself and only had like two or three pieces because I could have sat there and ate the whole thing. But yeah, I do get cravings for Nutella a lot and that literally just tastes exactly the same. So I'm excited, I'm excited about that. Vigo bar, hazelnut chocolate bar. I might just, uh, I just grab a little piece just, just for me quickly. Um, okay, so I think that brings us to the end of this favourites video. A little bit of a random bunch, but I hope you guys enjoyed that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you soon. Bye.